know how you start down a rabbit hole and then you keep changing things? So this is actually another unit. This is two pieces to that other unit. They're the glass pieces. I figured they'd be less intense and they light up. So I thought it'd be pretty. Um, we'll see because we're over there trying to make it work. Let's just say that my man is sick of moving furniture. He's trying to watch football. There goes baby. Say hi, baby. Say hi, baby. There goes my man. He's headless. He's a headless man. We are in St. Louis. Everything looks like it's been dipped in dust. Nothing's quite clean. It's very interesting. I've never seen anything like that out of a city. <clears throat> We're gonna go find a place where we can wear a bib and gorge ourselves on seafood. <laughs> That's how we're doing, babe. <laughs> we're doing one of the three. Oh, and I'm going to be meeting with um, Dr. G tomorrow for tea. So that might hopefully be a civilized part of the city. Hopefully that's going to be a civilized part of the city. We'll have to see. Maybe not. He's got me so casual, y'all. I'm even wearing leggings. Look. Because I wanted to dress it, but he flamboozled me. This is my travel outfit, and we're going out in it, even though I brought heels and dresses. And, and I brought some stuff. And he brought beautiful things, but neither one of us is going to look beautiful today. What are you talking about right now? <laughs> So, um, fun fact about me is I actually do work out every single day. I sort of have to. My man likes to work out, so I make sure that I work out once a day so that I'm doing what he's doing. And I don't do a lot, <laughs> but I definitely spend uh, about one to two hours working out every morning. So, yeah, who knew? Uh, I like to go outside, but when there are mosquitoes out, I go into the gym. Utah? Yeah, Utah. Okay. And then... No, that was right. You had it right the first time. And after Utah, let's do Colorado. I'll see you Colorado. It's near Utah and New Mexico. Is Utah and Mexico? So it's by... Yeah, it goes by... Turn it around though. It doesn't go that way. That's upside down. Yeah, Colorado. Okay, so after Colorado, let's try to do let's try to do Oregon. Oregon goes above California and Nevada. Oh, above Yes. Good job. Can you push over? All right, and no, you push yeah that way. And then Washington goes above Oregon. What state is that? Above Oregon. Which one is Oregon? This one. Right. Good job. Okay, and then next to Oregon and Washington is Idaho. They have potatoes in Idaho. Okay. It goes next to Washington and Oregon. Good. And then we have two states that we can do next. One is Wyoming. Wyoming? And one is Montana. Wyoming goes right there. Show me where it goes. No, show me by putting the puzzle piece on the um on the map. So Wyoming. Goes right there. Good job. And then we have Montana. Montana? Montana goes by Idaho and above Wyoming. Good job. So, can you not put your feet there? Yeah. I don't, I don't make it stand up like here. Let me see it. Okay. Let me see um, it. 
All right, and so now if we go by North Carolina, which is the one with the bear, we have Tennessee. <gasps> Tennessee goes by North Carolina. North Carolina is the one with the bear. With the bear. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we have. Uh oh. We have to lift up this. Okay. 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 We have to lift up this. Then we have Kentucky what? above Tennessee. This. Yes. Like this. Yes. Like. So we have Nebraska under South Dakota. And the South Dakota. Stop it. Right here. Good job. You're so smart. Well, this is pretty crazy. He cannot read this whole book, but he can read the first. I can't read the whole book. No, he can't read the whole book, but he can read the first couple of pages. So I'm going to let him do it. Bit. Uh-huh. Dots. Good job. And little dots. Smart boy. Sarah, that's my Australian accent. Sir, okay, I'm trying to show you guys this. Do I need to back out? Oh, I think I'm as far back as I can go. Maybe I can show you from this side. Okay, I'm doing my whole house, but I wanted to show you guys. Oh, no, I have to cut that. Hold on. Oh, gosh. I have to cut this. Okay. All right, I wanted to show you guys what I'm doing with my li my living room pillows because something weird has been going on. These pillows are actually, whoa. Okay, I've been, I can't show you guys my hands. Okay, so these pillows are actually pretty massive. I have a really big table. You can see how much of the table it takes out up. But the pillows have been looking like this. See the difference there? Because just having kids and people leaning on the pillows, which I hate because these pillows are actually uh, silk and the fringe is silk and they're down stuffed. So um, well, they're feather and down. They're not purely down, but they're feather and down. So my pillows ought to, don't mind my teacup here, sorry. My pillows ought to look like this, but they've kind of just been looking like smushed, just a smushed mess. That's my daughter's uh, bathroom rug right there. Don't mind my fingernails. I've picked off my nail polish. I'm literally like a 10 year old with nail polish but anyway so I am emptying the pillows out of the casings I'll show you what that looks like and I've been going over my pillowcases so what I've been doing is just okay so what I've been doing is I've been basically fluffing out my pillows to be square and not kind of crazy looking so that the actual pillow that goes inside looks like that and then I've been going over my pillowcases and there are areas like this where my children or just over time the fringe has been pulled and I've just been cutting that off because there's really no way to repair it so that I get a nice beautiful pillow that looks like this and then I'm just going to beat my kids up <laughs> if they come in this room. No, I'm kidding, but you know, um, yeah. So yay, I'm excited about that. I'm about to fix all of these and I'll show you guys the final result. So my pillow is fluffed, it's perfect. And the cover has, uh oh, I just found something that wasn't trimmed, hold on. Oh no, all right. It's a little bit rogue here, some rogue thingies here trying to make me look bad but I'm not gonna let you okay and now my pillow fringe any wild fringe has been trimmed and I'm gonna stuff it I'm gonna stuff it and then I just need to do this whole process two more times great last fact the zipper for this doesn't open up the whole way it opens up like I'll fold it so you can see 
So see that? That's the zipper. So I've got to get this pillow, which is about um, four to six inches wider than the opening here into there. But it is made of like it is stuffed with uh, it is stuffed with feathers. So possibly that's going to save me. We will see. So for those of you who are curious. It's 95% duck feather, 5% down, so it's actually mostly feather. I've never actually read this tag. And the pillow size is 22 by 22. It's 40 ounces of fill and for those of you who like to make pillows. And the fill on that's pretty good. So, yeah, this is the third one that I'm straightening out. It looks so much better after they're straightened out. Mom, There's a little boy I know. Mom. No, put it down. Thank you, sir. I'm putting it in the trash. Uh, no, thank you, sir. No, no, please, because I don't want fringe everywhere. Don't touch it. Okay. Those aren't all of them. Like, a lot of these are missing. Where could they be? So I guess I'll have to look downstairs, because I want the... Those in a bag sitting around. Okay. I saw This one right here, I've had her cleaning her room. I saw them. I don't think I'm her favorite person right Mom, now. Mom, I saw them. Am I your I favorite person? Them. Am I one of your favorite people? Uh, okay, you're one of my favorite people too. I was wrong. I thought she might be holding a grudge against me because I went in their rooms and I was like, this is a negative. And I was not nice about it. But Mom, everybody Mom, will feel Mom, happier Mom, when their Mom, rooms are Mom, clean. Mom. Stop. I know what those other matches are. I saw them and went. Uh -huh. I want the crowns too though. Anyway, let me finish this because I also have to repair and fill the wood and da 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 da. So I just wanted to demonstrate like what a huge improvement it was. So this is my sofa and this is a sofa that I've done the pillows on. Just look at how big and perfect they look. They look so big. They look so perfect, right? And then in contrast, this is the sofa I haven't done it on and don't mind that, that's my son who's here from Japan. His. So this is the sofa that I have not done it on. So this is the sofa that I have not done it on in contrast. And it just looks very sad, doesn't it? And look, the pillows are so smushed that the big pillows actually look the same size as the small ones, which is a problem. But then again, if we go back to the other couch where we have emptied out the pillowcases, fluffed them, and kind of fixed the fringe. It looks stunning. It's so pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other two pillows. It's actually way more work than it ought to be, but I mean, I'm not mad because I love the look. And this is just a great way to make the room just look that much more tidy. I'm so, so my son put his French book up here. You know, French is one of the languages. He is learning and that he speaks he's not fluent 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 by fluent i mean he can't speak like a native speaker but you and i wouldn't know the difference right maybe a french person would um so he put his french book up there but it's blue i think he did it because it's a dictionary but i'm going to take it upstairs simply because yeah i can't just have it like that so anyway I'm really happy with this. Don't mind, don't mind the fact that this stuff is down because I'm literally like cleaning my house right now. But I just wanted to make this part of my cleaning, changing the couches, making them perfection. So yeah, I'm gonna work on these two pillows. Before I forget, um, I'm doing the baking powder biscuits. These are dairy free. Um, I'm doing a batch and a half. So I will give you the batch measurements and then you can do what you want with the half. So I did three cups of flour. Well, I did more than three cups, but the batch, the regular batch is three cups of flour, one tablespoon of sugar, one tablespoon of baking powder, um, one teaspoon of salt, I'm trying to remember everything, six tablespoons of oil, um, about one and a like three or four, five tablespoons of, um, maybe one and two tablespoons of water. Um, I also added a little bit of 
uh, Italian seasoning and uh, some of that rosemary. I just broke it apart and I dropped it in here too. And I also added a little bit of white pepper because I like mine to be flavorful. So yeah, so this is actually a batch and a half, not a batch. I'm going to mix it up well um, because this is actually a baking powder biscuit dough. I find that rather than using a dumpling dough, it goes over better if I use a baking powder biscuit dough. It's really important not to overcook these so that the inside is like bread. Otherwise, the insides will become doughy. So it could be tempting to cook them longer because the outsides look a certain way, but we're more concerned with like the insides. So with that said, I'm going to mix this up and then I will show you when I drop these in the pot. Uh, if I can talk. When I drop these in the pot and um, what the cook time is on those. Okay, so I have 33 dumplings. They're rather small. Um, now, I make mine small. You can make yours big, but I make mine small because I'm feeding children. They like to feel they have a lot of dumplings. Also, remember there's a significant amount of baking powder in these, and so they are gonna get bigger. So keep that in mind because they have to sit on the top of your pot. Now. With all that said, remember that I did make one and a half batches. So like you can probably say that like all of these won't be in yours. So I'm going to just drop these in the pot. It's still in the same. It's on a simmer and you cook them covered and I'm going to drop them in really fast. So I'm going to put you guys down. If you cooked your dumplings correctly, they will sink. How you will know that they are done is they are going to rise up to the top of the pot. And so, yeah, that's what we're gonna keep our eye out for. We are gonna keep it covered. Yum, 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 this is gonna be so good. This is one of our favorite meals. It was a long day. I watched Christian play outside and this is perfect for just sort of allowing them, you know, allowing myself a chance to cook something that's easy and nutritious, but like very hands-off and very quick once the chicken has, you know, boiled to the point where you can take it off the bone. I want to move fast because these dumplings are done. As you can see, they reach the top of the pot, which means that they are definitely done. I keep mixing it together. I'm going to be dumping this into my pot, and this is going to thicken up my... chicken and dumplings. So I probably won't use all of this because a little of this goes a long way. Yeah. But yeah, so you can see it's basically watery. There's a few chunks in there. That's not perfect, but children are very forgiving. So I'm going to pour that in there. and basically mix it up really well. And that's gonna give it that darker color. It's also gonna thicken it up a lot. Show you a proper dumpling. And that is that the center is much like a baking powder biscuit. It's dry on the center. On the outside is like a little more of a gooey dumpling. That is the perfect dumpling. Bread in the middle. Nice and gooey dumpling on the outside. Let me pick up this piece. Don't mind my hands, y'all, because I was in flour, but you can see that that is bread in the middle. Yum.